All right, here we are given r is equal to f of theta, and we are going to find dy dx. Namely, we are trying to see how to find the slope of the line tangent to the polar curve. And let me give you guys a picture first. So have a look right here. Let's say the curve looks like this. So I'll just give you guys a picture looks like this. And let's just focus on this portion. And of course, you know it can be really crazy, right? All right, dy dx represents the slope of the line tangent to the curve at some point. Let's say the point is right here. So if I grab it, you will see that this is the tangent line. And the slope right here is precisely the dy dx, right? Well, here is the deal. In fact, to deal with the polar equation, we can always go back to the parametric equation first. Why? Because we have the following. Check this out. In the previous video, I showed you guys that if we have x, this right here, we can write this as r times, remember, x is with cosine. So this right here is r times cosine. But we are not going to put down t because in the polar situation, we are in the theta world. So we put down the parameter theta. And then the y, this right here is equal to r times sine theta. So we can always go back to the parametric equation uh, for the calculus part as well. You see, in this case, though, r is not just a number. r is a function of theta. So you see, this right here becomes f of theta. So let me just put that down right here for you guys. Times cosine theta right, times cosine theta. And then for this right here, it's just f of theta times sine theta, like this. Great. Now, here is the deal. I would recommend you guys to always do this whenever you are trying to find out the dy dx of a polar curve, because sometimes you might be able to simplify this situation right here, like these expressions. If you just memorize the formula that you are about to see, that's not a good idea, right? But anyway, if you want to see the formula, here we go. Because now we are talking about a parametric function, we remember that dy dx, right, dy dx, this right here is the same as saying dy, d parameter, which is theta, because in the previous section is dy dt, but here we are using theta. And then the bottom is dx, d theta. And we can just go ahead and differentiate whatever we need, right? And this is not easy. That's why I told you guys to not to uh, memorize this. All right, here we go. dy, d theta, meaning we look at this and differentiate that. So have a look. We will actually have to use the product rule. I will keep the first function. Namely, we will have f of theta. And then we multiply by the derivative of the second. The derivative sign is cosine, and then we have theta, and we add the second function, which is sine theta. But let me just put that down right here. And then we multiply by the derivative of the first, and I will put that in the front, which is f prime of theta. Similarly, for the bottom, we just do dx d theta. That means we look at this. Differentiating this, we use the product rule again. Keep the first function, which is again, f of theta times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine theta. And then we add the second function, which is cosine theta. And then we multiply by the derivative of the first. The derivative of f of theta is just f prime of theta, right? So you see, this is a pretty big formula for the dy dx. And again, 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 this is not what I would recommend you guys to do. Don't memorize this. Right? So let me give you guys an example real quick. So I will say, find dy dx in terms of, of theta for r is equal to cosine theta. And if you graph r is equal to cosine theta, in fact, you get a circle, right? Just get a circle, and you can also Use a graphing calculator where you can just convert that back to Cartesian. You can see that either way. Anyway, let's just work out the formula right here. dy dx is equal to this. But again, I would recommend you guys to do this first. So have a look. Here, 
we have r, I mean we have x is equal to r times cosine theta. And this is just because of what we told about before. How we change from polar to parametric. How we change from polar technically to Cartesian because we in the end get the x and y. Well, y is equal to r sine theta. Right? However, in this case, we see that r is equal to cosine theta. So we will just put this down right here for the r. And we have cosine theta times cosine theta. And this is nice d cosine square theta. On the bottom, here we will just have cosine theta times sine theta. Well, do we have any nice formula for that? Yes. This right here is actually sine of 2 theta, but I don't have the 2. It's okay, we can just divide it by 2. So have a look. This right here is actually the same as 1 half of sine of 2 theta right here. right? 1 half sine of 2 theta. Let me see if you guys can see okay. One more time. 1 half sine of 2 theta theta. There we go. All right. Now, do, do the derivative. So we have dy dx, which is dy d theta over dx d theta. Well, here we go. dy d theta, we just need to look at this and then do the derivative. And you see, I do not have to do the product rule because I remember what I told you. <laughs> I Simplify this a little bit, right? If you use this formula, it's going to be horrendous. Don't do that. Well, not that horrendous, but like pretty horrendous, I would say. Anyway, though, differentiating this, we have one half. It's stay in the front, so I'll just put that down right here. And see, I don't even need to have a, such a long fraction bar. Anyway, one half, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the input stays the same. But don't forget the chain rule, multiply by the derivative inside. The derivative of 2 theta is 2, so I multiply by 2 right here. And this and that cancel. Very nice. As of the top, you see right here, I will have to do the dx d theta. So look at this equation. And I will have to use the power rule first. So bring the 2 to the front. We have 2 minus 1. So we still have cosine to the first power theta. But multiply by the derivative cosine, which is negative sine theta, like this. All right, have a look. On the top is cosine of 2 theta. On the bottom, negative 2, right? So we have negative. But this and that, 2 sine theta, cosine theta, is nicely sine of 2 theta. And we can say this is just a negative, and then, of course, that's cotangent of 2 theta, like this, right? So this is how we can get dy dx in terms of theta of a polar curve. And uh, in order for you to figure this out, in fact, if you want to figure out like a value of that, in fact, you will have to know the theta value. So you can see this right here. I need to know the theta value in order for me to plug that in and then compute the slope of the tangent line right there, right? So one more time, don't memorize this formula, please don't. I never tell my students to memorize this formula, but rather know the connection between how you can change from the polar to Cartesian. Well, it actually depends how you look at it. Because this is technically the parametric, so change from polar to parametric, and then you will be able to just do the things that you have done in the previous section. Much easier, sometimes you will be lucky enough you can see some cancellations, so it's much better. Right? Anyway, this right here is it.